Welcome to episode 282 of the Whatnots Review Show, where every week we pick a story and we talk about it. This could be a movie, TV series, anime, manga, comic book, audio drama, all kinds of entertainment. We watch it, read it, listen to it, and then we come back here and talk about it. My name is Melissa Wilkinson, and I am joined, as always, by Kyle Springer. <coughs> I have the black lung, Melissa. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> I man, I am happy to be be here. I have been very sick this past week. Um, thankfully, I'm on the mend. I'm not fully back better yet. It's kind of lingering a little bit. Um, so you guys might hear me cough a little bit or start to wheeze. Uh, but hope hopefully I can like shut my mic off before I actually cough, so it won't be on the recording. All that good stuff. Uh, professional yeah but that's been my week just like did bedridden couch ridden watching oh, all no. kinds of television shows uh and i am here to inform you all that after party season two is phenomenal i'm midway oh, through it it is funnier than the first season mm. might be better in general it's real good i like it nice. so yeah catching up on some some shows and stuff what have you been up to melissa i i guess you've been too sick to go to the movies so you didn't get yeah. to see our friend godzilla yet i didn't i had tickets for last friday oh. and that was like the worst night where i was just like Oof. i feel i feel terrible um Oof. so yeah haven't but, but i've heard great things i'm assuming it's, you saw it I, yes so I also had heard great, but not specific things. Just it's very good, extremely high ratings. And I was thinking, oh, this must be cool. It's it is cool, but I did not expect how moving this film would be. I did not mm. expect the level of capital P pathos in Godzilla minus one. Mm, good. I'm glad I cannot wait. Um there's lots of good Godzilla content happening right now. Good synergy, as they say in the corporate world, <laughs> right? Yeah. We've Anyways. got our own synergy because we're here to talk about another famous green character. Yeah, indeed. Uh, the greenest I, of all. Yeah, uh, not Hulk. Um, <laughs> we are here to talk about the mask. Ta -da! Melissa, you are holding up the DVD of The Mask. <laughs> Truly a DVD. This is one of those cardboard boys with the little yes. plastic lip. For the audience, let me describe the DVD to you. This is part <laughs> of New Line's Platinum series. I bought this on discount for $4. Uh, on the front cover, it's that picture of the mask from the poster with the hat over his eyes. Jim Carrey is the mask from Zero to Hero. And his dog Milo is on the cover with a thought bubble over his head. And his thought bubble, he's thinking, in quotes, fantastic fun. I'm and glad then you he really thinks his own movie is fun. <laughs> it's, and then uh, there's an asterisk after it. And on the back cover, the asterisk leads to a very, very small piece of text that uh, attributes this to Pia Lindstrom WNBC TV. So he is thinking in the thoughts of critic Pia Lindstrom. Fantastic now, fun. Is Pia Lindstrom somehow, is, is this a meta commentary on the media? It, what's, what, how, how does that relate to the dog's role in the film? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me read you the, uh, yeah. the, the <laughs> synopsis from the back of the DVD, please. Jim Carrey, parentheses, liar, liar, dumb and dumber. Stars as mild-mannered bank clerk Stanley Ipkiss, who discovers a mysterious ancient mask that brings his innermost desires to wild, screaming life. Now, together with Cameron Diaz, parentheses, a life less ordinary, my best friend's wedding, and his sidekick Milo, does not specify that Milo is the dog you see on the front cover. Just the sidekick. This why. <laughs> <laughs> this wisecracking green tornado is taking Edge City over the top, but not taking Edge City over the edge, which feels like a given. 
in this romantic action comedy that will leave you capital S smoking. And then there's a picture of the mask and the mask also has a thought bubble over his head and his thought bubble says interactive menus. (laughs) Yes. Just what I wanted in my DVD. I love a DVD that's so proud to be a DVD because like, have you heard of DVDs? Do you know what they can do? This promised uh, both widescreen and regular full frame versions of the film, but Mm. I could not get to that in the menu. I could not find where it was. And I don't know if old remotes had a button that you could just click to switch between the two, but new remotes do not have those. Is it the kind where you can flip the DVD? Oh my God, is that one it? One is on one side and one's on the other. What does the disc l- look like? Like, is there a- oh, anything it's printed one of those. on it? That's, yeah, it's uh, it's one I've of the, 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 those. <laughs> I've not seen one of these in so long. I forgot that was an option. I had to watch The Mask in like a box on my <laughs> TV. So, like, I guess I put it in on the full screen side Mm -hmm. and it knew it was too low resolution to fill up my. Oh, so it was like like extra small TV. Right. So it's like I'm looking through a tunnel. Oh, no. But I I don't know. It didn't feel wrong. I don't think there's any wrong way to watch the mask. Right. Yeah. Um, Man, this movie, I tried to describe what my recollection of this movie was last week when I, when I, when I picked it I I didn't really pick this you gave me an option of a red movie or a green movie and I picked For green yeah uh and it happened and to I'm be like you know that one Jim Carrey movie where he's green that you watch around Christmas time we're not watching that one. We're watching The Mask. Indeed. Yeah. My, I don't, I don't have a memory of myself watching this movie at any point in time, <laughs> but I know I've seen it. You must I, have. I, You're yeah, alive. I, I, I <laughs> does, if I hadn't, does that mean I wouldn't be alive? What is that? I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, you, it's part of like the presidential physical fitness exam. Like right. it's Have that ingrained the in 90s check. children. Um, Do a sit and reach. <laughs> watch the mask. Flex arm hang is up next. Um, You're a real it, 90s kid now. Yeah. No. Uh, like I, I know I've seen this and. I, I, I could quote it like I knew all of the smoking like I, I knew all of that stuff. I I knew that he had a dog. I, I knew that there was that whole like bank scene where the guy like keeps having to is like, I can help you. And they just go to St- Stanley yeah. kiss instead. Like I I remember so much of it. But I don't have a like a specific memory right. of ever consuming this movie <laughs> like you don't remember like where you were or who you were it, with it's it's like when when you bought your first ipod and and the, 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 and there was just a youtube album already on there and it was just like <laughs> wait what i didn't buy this you came, you came pre-installed <laughs> with the mask yeah 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 absolutely <laughs> <laughs> now i we were a mask household. <laughs> we we had this on VHS. Uh, this is why I bought like the cheap four dollar DVD mm-hmm. at a local used video store because I'm like, well, I can no okay. longer. I don't have a VCR anymore, but I must have a mask in my life. I need my those brother and I watch this menus. a lot. And I, when I think back to VHS tapes I had as a child. Because my parents weren't the sort Mm -hmm. to just, like, collect everything. Like, oh, we'll just, like, automatically, if we see the new Disney movie in a store, we'll buy it for the kids. Like, we didn't have everything. And in my adult mind, I look back on my childhood, and I'm like, why did we have, like, one thing and not another thing? Why are we an Aladdin house and not a 
Little Mermaid house. And I'm like, I know we had the mask because my dad liked the soundtrack. This is Melissa's dad music. The Royal Crown Review, that was popular in the house. Stuff adjacent to it, like a, a Tower of Power. He, this was the first time I heard a song in a movie that I hadn't heard before. And my dad just already had it on a, like the original CD that it came on. Like, I'm like, mm. it doesn't exist exclusively within the mask. He's like, no, like a band did it like years ago. I like that band. And so we, he, we would just make him play Hey Pachuco for us as children. Good stuff. That's so wild that we have such like different like histories with this movie. It's interesting. Um, I am excited to talk about it. I as soon as I turned this on, as soon as the music starts, I had such an immediate like deep emotional reaction to it. It called go. to me. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, I I enjoyed rewatching this. Um, it's a pretty straightforward, simple movie. Um, <laughs> man uh, meets mask. Yeah. Man puts on mask. <laughs> man does things with mask. Uh, <laughs> man takes mask off the end. Um, <laughs> it, it, I mean, but it, it is. It's it's a pretty str- like straightforward <laughs> movie. It doesn't really overstay its welcome it feels very much like a 90s movie um Mm -hmm. i i also don't think this like i remember this being funnier too uh and i i didn't find it as funny as i thought i was going to i still Mm -hmm. laughed and had a great time i I thought it was funny but uh not, not as much as i was expecting um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I think there's some interesting choices. I think there's some interesting things that could have, uh, they could have dove into. I guess I'm also not familiar with the source material. I know it's based off it some based comics. On a, uh, I think it's a dark horse comic. Doesn't that put it in the same correct. world as our yes. friend Hellboy? As Hellboy. Yeah. Um, same publisher, not necessarily the same universe, but yes. Um, <laughs> I so you can imagine a spooky old wooden mask that once belonged to the no- oh, Norse demigod oh, sure. Loki would show up in the world of Hellboy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but Stanley Ipkiss would not. R- right. No. Um, but it like it, it it's interesting, though, that it's it's a dark horse comic. And yet this movie, what it re- references the most is like Looney Tunes and like cartoon, mm-hmm. like Warner B- Brothers style c- cartoons. Um, and I, I just thought that that was interesting. And I was t- 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 trying to figure out what if anything the movie had to say on that connection um <laughs> because it it seems to be a mask that grants its its wearers like deepest desires or mm. dreams it's not entirely clear but it it manifests itself differently depending on who's yeah. wearing the mask uh and Jim Carrey's character, Stanley Ipkiss, is always just trying to escape into these cartoons. He doesn't like his landlord. He has kind of a dead end job. He's a no buddy. He he works at a at a bank. I I think there's a guy above him who's like the ceo's son in that sure, regard yeah. he is a dead-end mm-hmm. job but like he works with a friend he it's mostly in terms of his relationships that he feels like his life is at a dead end uh he's a real sweetheart and like kind of a pushover yeah and there are like one of the things we see early on the, in the classic movie is, nice guy as I, I, it I, comes I, I, up in the movie not in the way that we use it today. I think he sincerely is like th- one of the first things we see him do is he buys these concert tickets, these like really exclusive concert tickets uh, th- for a female coworker he is friendly with. He's like, yeah, I'm looking forward to going to the show with you. And she's like, 
oh, my friend is in town. She really wants to go. Can you get a third ticket? And he's like, oh, no. Like, I, it took everything I could get, you know, to get these two tickets. And she's like, well, my friend really wants to go with me. You'd be such a sweetheart, Stanley. Th- thank you. And he's like, okay, enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a, pu- a pushover for sure. Um but that's the thing is when he puts on the mask is he becomes this cartoonish character, not necessarily a comic book <laughs> character. But as we see throughout the movie, his facial expressions, all of the stuff that he does where his eyes go out of his, his head, his heart comes out of his ch- 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 chest. It's all the stuff that he sees on these cartoons. Um and and so, yeah, I was just kind of looking at that, trying to see if there was any kind of deeper examination of that. I don't think there actually is, but. I don't know. It was still fun. It was yeah, still I good, don't yeah, right? I don't know. I don't know. It's critical thesis on Tex Avery, except for that was in the zeitgeist in the 90s. Looney Tunes were big. Mm-hmm. This sort of nostalgia of that era was big. It doesn't seem out of place that this guy is just like an old school animation nerd, kind of a goofball. He doesn't really have other goofy things about him. It's not like he's got like a giant prop toothbrush in his apartment, like in Pee Wee's Big Adventure or something. Like, it doesn't seem like he's. A- <laughs> He doesn't seem like he's a kook in any other ways. He just loves his Looney Tunes. Yeah. But also, like, he seems like he's, like, cell, like animation cells on his wall or something. Seems like a, an adult enthusiast. An, 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 an adult fanboy, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's... The Stanley Ipkiss is no different than you and I. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He um, feels relatable. Yeah. Yeah. He is the kind of every man. Um, but yeah, he puts on this mask and becomes this green skinned maniac, uh, that just kind of wreaks havoc. Uh, it, whether he knows green, he is his hands or not, still look the same. That's, that's true. Yeah. It, it is just his like head. Cause his neck is also still like it's, um, but yeah, he's he's just kind of out of control is the thing. He is the 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 titular Tasmanian de- 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 devil um, where he is just this whirlwind that comes sweeping through and. He gets the girl. He knows how to dance. He can dodge <laughs> bullets. He can stretch. He can do all sorts of stuff. I don't know. Mm. It, it, he just goes on a crazy adventure. Uh, and that's kind of it. It's uh, super yeah. simple. It's good. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gets the girl, stops a robbery, becomes Cuban Pete. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cool. I don't have anything else to add to like synopsis stuff or like spoiler <laughs> free thoughts. Box on told the... us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So there you go. Uh, we will take a quick break for housekeeping. And when we come back, we will dive into the film a little bit more in depth. Uh, So we will be right back. Here at The Whatnots, we make multiple different shows and a lot of hard work goes into making them. So we would love it if you check them all out. If you enjoy our shows, patreon.com slash The Whatnots is the best place to show your support. For just a dollar a month, you can get early access to episodes and at our three dollar tier, a Patreon exclusive podcast, The Pilots Club. You can even get a shout out and what thank you on most of our shows at the $5 Sunday tier. Do you think we'd do and the if Grand you're one of our Prix. patrons already, thank you so much. It means the world to us. You can find out more information on our website, thewhatnots.com, okay. as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in the Jack whatnots, and I were all just, of our we shows gotta will find pop a time to go right see there. Wonka. Just don't we forget to give must. us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. You can also find us on YouTube and Twitch for video versions of the shows, trailer reactions, and live streams. And lastly, we have merch. If you want to grab yourself a shirt or a hoodie or a mug or something else, head over to thewhatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. All right, we are back. A big shout out 
to our Patreon supporters. If you are a Patreon thank supporter, you. yes, thank you. We love you a lot. It means a ton. Uh, over on the Pilots Club, Melissa, you and I just got done recording our Pilots Club on Unicorn Warriors Eternal. Uh, by the time this goes up for the public, for everyone, that will already be up. Uh, so you guys can go check it out. Be on the lookout for that. That's Gendy Tartakovsky's no, 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 it's cartoon. You guys can check it out on Max. Uh, it's an interesting one if you are into animation and all sorts of different styles from d d manga and old Max Fleischer cartoons and Speed Racer and Betty Boop and Dexter's Lab and all sorts of stuff. There's tons uh, in there to look at. Um, but yeah, right here on the review show. Uh, last week, we finished up our coverage of Hellboy. Uh, over the past couple months, we have been doing the Hellboy comics, and we read the final three volumes, volumes 10 through 12. Um, so yeah, go check that stuff out. That was a blast. Feels like comfort <laughs> mm -hmm. to just go read some Hellboy. Um, so... Go check that stuff out over on the captain's log. Uh, Melissa, let's see. What did we talk about last week? I got to talk about hit monkey. Melissa, you got to talk about salt burn. Uh, we also got to talk about uh, Yuki Sonoda's fast and furious day in Formula One. It was great. Uh, we have some fun on that. I recounted a nightmarish Thanksgiving, almost ended my Thanksgiving uh, story. Uh, so go check all that stuff out over on the Captain's Log. Next week on the Captain's Log, though, is our Rotten Tomatoes yeah. movie prediction game. Yeah. That's going to be a blast. So uh, be on the lookout for that as well. Over on the Reactor Core we got spoiler casts up for Loki season two and the Marvels. Um, we also have a trailer reaction up for Good Burger 2. Go check all that stuff out. Two. Yeah, indeed. I still haven't watched it yet. I don't have Paramount Plus at the moment. But Melissa, you saw it. You saw it. I did. I don't think um, so. I, it's burger tastic. What can I say? I'm still confused about burger children, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, that's about it for our housekeeping. Uh, the last thing that I do want to mention, though, uh, is in mid-December, uh, we will be doing our end of the year Grand Prix, as we are now mm -hmm. calling it, the Whatnots Grand Prix our end of the year retrospective celebration uh this will be out on all feeds uh so no matter what podcast of ours you listen to it'll be out on all of them uh but yeah we'll just be looking back on the year all all the things that we uh we we did and all the things we got up to so should be good should be fun i think we are recording that on december 17th so be on the lookout for that, which also means next week is the final episode of the review show yeah. for the year. Um, so, yeah, be aware. Be aware of all of that stuff. Be, beware. <laughs> be, be, beware. Yes. <laughs> it cool. says be warb. <laughs> um, well, that is about it for housekeeping, so without further ado, let's get into spoilers on The Mask. All right. Melissa, where do you want to start with this one? I, actually, can... can I mention something? Yes. First here, not actually about mention the away. movie, but I feel like you're in the perfect outfit for this movie. You're in a shirt with like two colors right down the middle. Yeah. So it's yes. it's this like duality, a mask, no mask, <laughs> right? Good stuff. Am I Stanley? Good. Am I the mask? Good also, choice. Just it reminded me of Garth Brooks 
and his big <laughs> color block shirts. So I've just got a 90s vibe going on here with my straight down the middle Harvey Dent look. Thank you. There you go. Uh, indeed, <laughs> if only indeed. I had l- like loudly patterned pajamas I could have worn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start with those then. Suit. <laughs> Let's start with Let's those start then. With the, the pajamas. pajamas. <laughs> The most impossible thing of the whole movie, which I thought was they're ridiculous. Not, they're not that weird. I think they've got no, like they're little not weird at all. Anch- they have like little anchors and like ship steering wheels on them. Like that's a a that pattern makes sense. It's not yeah. like it's super wild and abstract or super cartoony. It's like no, no, like you could get that at Dillard's or something. That's prep wear. Tommy Hilfiger might make little anchor pajamas it's for the so classy f- boater at sleep. It's so funny because, yeah, there's this the, the scene where I, I, I think it's the night after the first time he puts the mask on. Mm. Um, or, or is it after is it after he robs the bank? I don't remember exactly when it is but like the the police are there to question him uh and yeah jim carrey is in just these normal looking pajamas uh and they are kind of so exasperated might be the right word especially with the landlady trying to tell them what they think is this like fantastical story about this green maniac who like threw himself out the window and did all of this stuff and they they look at him in 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 his pajamas and he's just like and these impossible pajamas (laughs) (laughs) like it it was to me one of the funniest things of the whole movie because he's just completely (laughs) baffled by these pajamas the detective whose name i don't remember yeah it's I love this detective. He's so extremely mad at everything. He's constantly, he's got this real dopey partner named Doyle. And several times through the movie, he gets fed up Freaking with him. And Doyle. Goes, Doyle! <laughs> Doyle means well. You're the crab, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. But yeah, I, I, I just, I, I loved that. He, he's, he's just completely fed up with these pajamas after seeing them once. Uh, <laughs> his day is ruined yeah after seeing a mildly busy pattern he yeah can't handle it yeah and then he like uh a part of them like tears off and is left at the scene mm. uh at right, some point even, so stanley puts on the mask when he's like at home in his pajamas at night and then he swirls <laughs> around he turns into the mask uh, he goes t- to rob the bank because the mask doesn't play by anyone's rules. Mm. Somebody shoots at him. A piece of his tie, like the mask's tie comes off, but then once it's separated from the magic of the mask, then it just turns into a scrap of Stanley's pajamas. And he's just like, impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Never, it's so he's ridiculous. Like only, he's like, only one man in the city has these. He yeah. doesn't imagine like, well, what store do, sells them? Who else may have bought them? He's like, just one weirdo I've ever seen. Only exactly. Stanley Ipkiss. Exactly. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Half I want to talk Thank about you. how this is Cameron Diaz's first film role. Is it really? Yes. Wow. They discovered they just saw her walking out of a modeling agency and they're like, her? Is it her? Uh, and I think she did go through. I was reading some IMDB trivia. She went through several rounds of auditions, which I guess makes sense if you've never <laughs> formally acted before. But she gets the and introducing credit. And I'm always oh. happy when you see oh. one of those in an older movie. And it's like, you did introduce us to that person that paid off. Yeah. Way huh. to spot in- him. Interesting. And her her introduction in this movie, she is playing hot girl. Like yes. the hottie of your dreams. The lady in she red. She s- steps into this bank. Right. She's coming out of the rain. She's like shaking water off of her hair. She's wearing this like tight red like cocktail dress just to go to the bank at 4 p.m. She makes 
Stanley Epkiss and his friend so horny that there's two rack focus shots on them just gazing at her. It's really over the top, but also it's like, and not to objectify her, but like she truly arrives in this movie fully formed. She is so gorgeous. Yeah. Like this is ridiculous, but I can't say it's not true that she is one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, did not know that this was her first role. Uh, mm-hmm. Interesting. That's that's really, really cool. Um yeah, I I mean she was great in this. Uh of course she I mean it, it is a 90s movie. She is she's not the damsel in distress. Not so much. She, she is not more than kind she has to be. The love interest is maybe a which better. I which I this is a thing that i think the movie does in an interesting way that she's the you find out she's the girlfriend of the gangster she's the traditional mm-hmm. gangsters mall right. in the old film parlance and stanley also meets this pretty but in a slightly mousier way reporter mm-hmm. and you could look at this movie in another way and imagine oh hot girl <laughs> will betray him uh d- cute but sweet book smart girl she's the real one for you mm-hmm. the one and who's no been it's there the other along. way like, right yeah right no she betrays him the reporter and i she's like look i gotta get the story i need the money my condo's not paying for itself here i can't move i had to sell you out like she's not vindictive she's just like that's the way it has to go <laughs> there's the break yeah. stanley sorry i didn't make this economy yeah um it's it but like from that perspective yeah it's twisting that kind of narrative and flipping it on its head but the movie is also uh playing the like nice guy narrative where where he you know wrote in into the the magazine i'm mr nice guy i always finish last like I always hold the door for everyone. I do this. I do that. Right. And how come I'm still single? Um, And it is also playing into the like, and the nice guy will get the really super hot, the the smoking hot girl at the end. And it's just like, well, that's also maybe the male fantasy. They're showing its head in that way. Um, Just an observation with that. Uh, I he is also a nice guy in in matters outside of romance. Like you see him with his his landlady who comes in and screams at him. He's like, you know what? I hope you have a nice night. And then he just goes back to his apartment and like doesn't retaliate. Like, hey, you if I come in with a little mud on my shoe, please don't scream at me and insist that I pay to replace the entire carpet. He goes to the auto mechanic. He's like, hey, drop my car off for this thing. And they're like, oh, oh, buddy, that's um, oh, that's a real problem. It's going to cost seven hundred dollars. <laughs> we can give you a loaner. And the loaner is this real hunk of junk. And he's like, OK, we'll take the loaner. Like it's his nice guyness is is pervasive in multiple facets of his life mm-hmm. where he just yeah. sort of grits his teeth doesn't say what he's really thinking goes along with it. So what the mask unlocks for him is what if you had no filter and you did whatever you wanted and you didn't let anybody push you around? Yeah. Uh, And that leads to several dance numbers. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Nobody stops him from dancing in his everyday life. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, or maybe he tried once and they were like, hey, dude, uh, let's I, let's not never, the, never again. He's, his landlady does really bang on the on the ceiling. I think she lives below him. I imagine she would stop him from dancing. Right. Yeah. She doesn't like there to be any noise. Um. Yeah. This was one thing I did not remember as much. I. I knew that like when they were happening, I remembered them. I was like, yes, this is 
the mask. I remember <laughs> the mask. I don't know how I do, but I, I do. Uh, but also, like, if you were to ask me, like, are there dance numbers in the, 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 the mask? I'd be like, no, I don't think so. Um, but they ha they have at least two. Is there three? Because there's the one in the like jazz club. Uh, yeah, there's the, the hey Pachuco. Yeah, there's that that one. There's is there one after that? There's later on when he goes on a date on the at the park, and then all the police have him cornered. He just does a Cuban Pete. And that's how we get okay. out of yeah. that situation. Yeah, that 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 was the yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I I like I when they played on screen, I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. I remember this. It's but not just, I, yeah, just have no recollection of of where I watched this or how I consumed this at all. The back of the DVD described it as a romantic action comedy. It does not cite this as a musical. I think two numbers uh, isn't enough to qualify it as a musical, but that is part of its lexicon. They're that more is one gags of the than like, hey, yes. we're actually doing this, a musical piece. This is piece. my I want song. Right. Yeah. 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 I love this was we were a musical household. We would rewind and watch any musical number over and over again. But I, I love the first one. I love the, the Coco Bongo Club. I love how his friend says it. Coco Bongo Club. <laughs> Stanley, I'm taking you on Coco a love Coco Bongo story. Club. <laughs> it, looks so, it looked so glitzy and glamorous to me when I was a little kid. It's this sort of... The, they're in a fictional city called Edge City, which oftentimes feels like New York, ostensibly, except for when they go to the Coco Bongo Club and it's like, we're in Miami now. <laughs> it's got big bands performing. Uh, uh, Tina Cameron Diaz's character is there as this torch singer singing these sultry songs. She does sing. She has a whole musical number where she, she sings a song and he dances with her. The, these dances where it turns cartoony and he's like throwing her up in the air and spinning her around like a frisbee. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's entertaining. Like it's, it's so much fun to, to watch, even if the like CGI stuff isn't the greatest, it's still just like, man, it's, this is fun. It's, it's good for the time. The makeup effects are excellent. Like the mask when he is in the mask form, it looks great. And again, I was reading yeah. IMDb trivia and it says after they cast Jim Carrey, it's like this saved us a lot of money because you're so naturally cartoony. There's not a lot of exaggeration we have to do to you with the makeup or the computer. Yeah, they just had to you be like, let's like from home, put you in a bald cap and then maybe accentuate your brow somehow and like. He's he's already got the incredible bone structure and the perfect teeth. The big and then mouth. he turns into the mask. Yeah. Right. And then he's just more bone structure and more teeth. Apparently they had the fake teeth that were only supposed to be for dialogueless scenes or action or whatever. But Jim mm -hmm. Carrey learned to talk around the fake teeth. We're like, okay, just wear them the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> we I guess. Do I don't that. Know. It is one of the finest performances of the 90s. I I was aware of Jim Carrey as the larger star, but like I've never seen Ace Ventura. I think I saw part of Liar Liar on TV. I've seen Ace I just Ventura. Dumb, I just saw Dumb and Dumber for the first time like two years ago. Like <sighs> this was my Jim Carrey. Primarily was this. was Interesting. Mask. I think he's and, so much funnier in a number of other things. Um, I think this is an inc this is a really skilled performance. I can tell he's having so much fun. He really yeah. comes through all of the wackiness. Like he has to do so much in this. Wear the makeup, act against the dog, you mm -hmm. know, like do all these crazy stunts and dance numbers. But I do get what you're saying. Uh, about it not being as funny as you expected. I went through Letterboxd 
and I screenshotted some notable reviews. I want to read one from Dan sure. McCoy, probably the Dan McCoy from the Flophouse podcast, although it is a common name. Perhaps this is a separate Dan McCoy. Shout out to all Dan you McCoy's. Dan McCoys out there. This one's for you. <laughs> This review, three stars, says, I almost respect the mask for never quite figuring out what it is. Yeah. Is it a comedy? Sort of, but it's not actually that funny. Is it a superhero movie? It borrows the structure of one, but mostly just as scaffolding. Is it a zany tribute to Tex Avery cartoons? Sometimes, and that's when I like it best, I think that's really the main problem, pacing. This begs for a zany Roger Rabbit treatment, but as much as I like director Chuck Russell, he doesn't seem to have the madcap spirit needed to make this totally take flight. I don't know. Like I said, I'm corn kind of torn between appreciating the wild tone and wishing it would commit more to one thing. Which I guess is true. There is a stretch towards yeah. the third act where they catch him and they put him in jail and he's not the mask for a while. And you do miss seeing the mask. Having the dog jump around isn't quite enough. Yeah, I think I would agree with what they wrote on that. Um, that's that's the thing is, 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 is like I, I was trying to figure out like, OK, I know this is a comic like it's it's based off of a comic book. I've never read it. I don't think I've ever actually seen it. And I, I'm a huge co comic book nerd. I go to my local comic book store all the time. Uh, all that. Like, I don't think I've ever seen there, it. Yeah, there's and, never a mask omnibus. Right. And and uh, like, I'm, I'm sure you can find it e easily. But uh, still, it was just like, oh, I'm so <laughs> not familiar with this. And like, I there, just don't know what is, the comic would even be. There is a mask omnibus you can buy. It's like $23 on Amazon, but I've never like seen said, it you in can a find store, it easy. is what right. I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, but just like, I, I, I don't know what the content of that book would be. Is it different from the movie? How it's, different it's very, is it? It's much darker. Where yeah. when you put on the mask, you become... A more violent, aggressive, a more monstrous version. Right. version. Instead yeah. of just being like, I'm all the Looney Tunes rolled into one. Yeah, I like I, I could even see a flash of that. There's that one scene where he's being chased uh, by all the people by, and he had, he pulls out the gun and starts sh sh shooting them. Um, like that scene has a flash of that in there. And I, I like that stuff, but they just didn't go down that road. Um, and then, yeah, like it's cartoony and all that stuff. And I really like that. But it's it's not really the like who framed Roger Rabbit stuff. Mm. It's not really a cartoon. It's not g going fully into that stuff. It, it just it feels like it has its fingers dipped in a couple different pies, but yeah, not its mm hand dipped into one and one big thing you know you have what the mask is doing you have just the stanley ipkiss romantic comedy plot yeah. where jim carrey does have enough charm he is goofy enough that that's still entertaining and engaging but then when you cut to the main gangster and like his boss it's just stretches What's even of the happening movie there? There, are, there are no jokes <laughs> There's there's no joke. There's no explanation for like, yeah, we we run this club and that makes us the kings of Edge City. Right. Which also sounds like a cyber pop punk uh, name, mm -hmm. even though this is not a cyber pop punk movie at all. Um, it, d like. Is is it, what makes him a gangster that he owns a club? <laughs> I also want to talk about he how there's a, there's a big benefit at the Coco Bongo Club where they are collecting money for war orphans. Yeah. And this being in the 90s, I can presume they mean like Gulf War. But also the movies got such a throwback style. It almost feels like they could be talking about World War One or World War Two orphans. Yeah. It makes it feel just 
this movie's already out of place and that detail makes it feel strangely out of time. And they're taking the money. So the, it's a casino night at this club. Just dumping which it Which is inside. not not traditionally a casino. It is a club. So they've brought in all of these machines and, and card tables and everything as a fundraiser night. But it's serious enough that there is now a neon sign outside of the building that says casino night. Mm-hmm. So there's a whole neon sign for a single night, which is a very silly detail, but it really prickled at me. And they're taking all the cash from this and putting it in a big pig. There's like a sexy Giant cigarette sales bank. girl dumping cash into a big pig labeled for the war orphans. Oh, man. It, 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 it's it's re- just like Ed Seddy. I don't even know if it's supposed to be in America. Is it? Where else could it be? Is it Toronto? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but that's the thing is everything is so generic that like it's, it's like it feels like a comic book city in the sense that it is like the like a spoof of a comic book city, which m- makes it even more generic. Uh, and so it's just like, I don't know if this is supposed to be in America or their own world here that they're like, is there some like. Uh, d- inner city somewhere else like on the other side of the globe is there a beach (laughs) city City is it's a city that truly acts like it is the only city that has ever been and you barely get the sense that there's even a suburbs outside of the city it is a purely city nobody comes from anywhere or goes anywhere edge city is the name of the planet is actually what (laughs) what it is like um, Coruscant. <laughs> right, yeah. The whole planet's <laughs> one city. Um no, but 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 like it, yeah, it's just it's it's hard to picture where it is or if it's supposed to be like, is that supposed to be New York or is that supposed to be Chicago or I, Miami? I I don't know. Um but yeah, it it it, 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 it does make the whole place just kind of feel out of time and timeless. It watching it this time, it struck me how much this feels in the same space as the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. First off, okay. the bank where he works just looks a lot like the bank where they go to ask Joel. I McCoy did have that thought. Yeah. Spider-Man too. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's I did have that set. Thought. I don't know. But it has the same heightened version of reality even outside of the literal cartoonishness that the mask gets up to kind of heightened kind of campy i whatever aesthetic it is that those sam raimi spider-man movies have where they also feel like they are from another time this movie's the golden age comics yes yes i guess that's not something you can tie really tangibly to comic books, but in a very abstract way, looking back at movies of this 10 or 15 year period. Um, there's all uh, Tina also falls for the mask. Like sh- the mask kisses her and she's like, wow. But then she meets when she's talking to Stanley Ipkiss, she can like see that he's the mask. She's not like outright hinting at it, but she's like, I like you. I would like to get to know you better. And mm-hmm. he's like, oh, you know, my, would you like to meet my friend, the mask? I'm sure you really just want to meet him. Yeah, I happen it's, to know the guy. College roommates. Well, <laughs> right. It's just like the Peter Parker pretending he, know, he has a working relationship where Spider-Man allows him to take photos of him. Yeah. This really does feel like a primer for Spider-Man. Looking back on my childhood, I don't know if I would have liked the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies as much as I did if I did. You hadn't have. seen something like this. Yes. Interesting. And there's even hmm. more stuff from this era that I didn't see until later on in life, like Dick Tracy or The Rocketeer. Yep. Maybe even like that Phantom movie, that Shadow movie, stuff I still need to get to. Of yeah. this 90s and early... Tim Burton's Batman. 
this 90s and kind of up through the early 2000s, pretty much just in Spider-Man, look back at like the 30s and 40s, sometimes in a very literal way with Dick Tracy, mm-hmm. so, and sometimes in a more sort of abstract way where you're like, I don't know, there's just like a guy wearing a wide pinstripe suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everything is sort of a golden glow to it. Sometimes it's all you need just to have some fun, mm-hmm. you know? Indeed. Something I do want to note about the visual design of this movie yeah. is when you see Stanley's apartment, mm-hmm. I looked at his bed and his bed has like teal sheets and red pillows, which is such a weird color scheme. It looks strange. And later, when he turns into his Cuban Pete persona, which I have a lot of questions about that. Like, what is the song? Where did the song come from? Why are you Cuban Pete? Is Cuban Pete another, like, sub-nested within the mask identity? How many of you are in there? That's the color scheme he's wearing. The Cuban Pete outfit is teal, with this like red border on the big ruffly sleeves. Interesting. And he wears the yellow, primarily wears the yellow suit as the mask. And then he's got the yellow Frisbee that he's thrown along around with Milo. Huh. So it's just a lot of his later looks are very subtly seated in the design of his apartment. That's interesting. I don't think I noticed that I was as, as, as you started to mention it, I was wondering if it was a reference to anything in the like animation that I saw, uh, the cartoons he was watching, or is it something to even be like, man, he like the green when he has the mask on, the green is just so bright green, like it lights up the room. It is so bright. It's, um, it is neon. It, yeah. is, it is guacamole. It right. is it's, lime. It's, it's not actually like like giving off light or lighting the room, but it is so super saturated that it like you it, can see him in the dark. Yeah. Like I'm I'm wondering if there was some kind of like color correction going on or like, hey, we have to sh- shoot it like in in this lighting condition or to do this to achieve that effect. Um, and it, they just have they it ended up looking like they were teal and red when they were actually something else. No, I, Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow is another one of those early 2000s movies that feels like it's looking back at the 30s and 40s. There you go. I knew I could think <laughs> of another one. That's all. One of the funniest bits in this movie to me, I feel like I am looking at stuff like color palettes because I have seen this movie so many times. Sure. No. Yeah. And my great. brain has room for this nonsense. The night after he goes and robs the bank and he mm-hmm. walks away with classic big dollar bag, a big bag with dollar sign on it. Yep. The next morning he he wakes up. Here's the knock at the door and he goes to open the closet, maybe to get a a bathrobe or a coat or something. And all the cash comes spilling out of the closet. It was so funny to me. So I'm like, there's a couple bags in there, but most of the cash is loose. Why is the cash loose? He like emptied them out into the closet and then shut the door. I don't understand. So he left the bank with the cash in bags. He did not leave with it loose. He takes the bags to his apartment. (laughs) Even if he if he then dumps out a bag, swims around in the money. Why doesn't he? He would either put the cash back in the bag or leave it where it was. He wouldn't just shove loose cash into his closet. It makes the least sense. The mask didn't do that. Why would the mask bother to clean? Why why is it there? If it was just the bags, I would have no problem. But the piles and piles of loose cash. Let me ask you this. 
what if the giant bags with the money signs on them are also a manifestation of the mask? They are oh, cartoonish. They, there. they are cartoonishly Ooh. big. They are what you see in the cartoons. And so even though he stashed the bags in the closet, when he takes it off, the bags just kind of disappear. But some of them are still there. If there was no bag, I'd, I'd fully support you. But there is still some bagged cash. I don't know. It's not like he ma- literally took yeah. a bag and also That's manifested weird. a cartoon bag. And there's other stuff in the movie that does feel really exaggerated. Like, like the big pig full of sure. cash for war orphans. That makes me believe that maybe this is a world where when you're at the bank cash is just stored in a bag with a dollar sign on it i mean they do make a a a joke about hiding some money in the giant mattress that's in Mm. in the back there we never even (laughs) saw what was in the vault (laughs) what if there is what if there legitimately is and it's not even a joke everybody at the bank is so horny there's just a giant bed back there. Yeah. Hey, you want to go roll around go, on some money? <laughs> right. Everybody goes back there to screw on the cash mattress that all exactly. of these money is. In. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's a bit where uh, the mask comes upon a street gang. I love a, a diverse 90s street gang that belongs to no specific real world gang. <laughs> yeah. There's always one girl in it yeah <laughs> never more good than one her. one one girl only uh, she's making moves he's, good for her right <laughs> he's doing the bit with the balloon animals and when he goes to pull a balloon out of his pocket he pulls out a condom and he's like whoops <laughs> wrong pocket and then he pulls out the balloon and he makes the balloon dog First off, I think back on my childhood and how many movies had a condom in it. How mu- I must have seen a condom gag in a movie 10 times before I clocked what a condom was. Sure. But yeah. also, it just made me s- upset that we mentioned it earlier. Head green, hands regular. I'm like, I want a mask condom where when you put it on your dick, your dick becomes the mask. Not all of you, but you're. Your dick has the mask energy now. And I don't know what that just means. says smoking on the side. <laughs> <laughs> it turns green. Maybe it can do like wild plastic man stunts. I don't know. But now I I want to see it. There's two. You either watch the mask having no idea what a condom is, or you watch the mask wanting to see a mask dick. There's like very little space in between. Your two mindsets when you see this movie. I, I, I mean, that absolutely is the question that comes to mind when you think of like super he, he, heroes and stuff. And it's like, wait, <laughs> Superman's an alien. We haven't really seen him naked yet. Like what 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 is what is Lois dealing with? Right. I, <laughs> what, what is it like to screw the mask? <laughs> right. We must yeah. No. We'll keep it in the in, in the vault. <laughs> no one will know. <laughs> um, yeah, man, this is it's it's su- it's such a bizarre movie because there there are there's so many details like that, uh, just uh, about like what's happening or weird things in the world that's going on, um, and even like the way that the movie starts with this mask kind of being uncovered in like in this they're like pulling it out of not a shipwreck right but like a magma just the crater river. yeah and it, it just starts but it, it looks like it's some like undersea like titanic da, 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 dive but yeah when it floats mm. up it's just in the like it's in the east river in new york right it's just like what is happening um, <laughs> I want to read another segment of a letterboxed review. Uh, I didn't. Oh, I don't have the. U- oh, Scumbelina is the name of this letterbox user. Scumbelina. These are the things that are most memorable or profound about the mask. 
Did the diver who opens the chest containing the mask die? Yeah. The dead body floating in the river really scared me. It was very body. The mask's yellow suit is the most amazing thing I've ever seen, but especially the tie. I want to touch his face because it looks like putty. Cuban Pete is the only song in the world. The dog wearing mask scene is an underrated dog moment. It's a special treasure. Yeah. I agree but, like, with all of these. Yeah, like what what happens to the dead divers? What like when when he when he tries to get rid of the mask the first time and he to- tosses it out the window, it comes back to him like a boomerang. So what makes it wants him, him right? But then what makes it different at the end of the movie when he throws it and it goes into the river? He doesn't need it anymore. He's emotionally moved past his need for mask. The mask knows when you need mask. And it knew he didn't need it anymore. I mean, I guess. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I want to talk about how when he first puts on the mask and it kind of like warps his face, like he it's like magnetized to him. It's pulling towards him. And as he tries to pull it away, his face like smears towards it. Uh It's genuinely creepy. Briefly, yeah. but genuinely creepy. The like almost it body good horror effect. when he becomes the mask. And then later when the bad guy becomes the mask, when he is like yoked to heck, he's, his shape is entirely transformed. He's so severe. Up there looking so like Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> he's so scary looking. And I, I did like that. I, I'm happy that the movie had space to illustrate to us. Oh, that's what Stanley looks like when he puts on the mask. Right. Yeah. The mask reveals your innermost thoughts. And this guy's thoughts are nasty. So that's why he looks like that. Milo's innermost thoughts are, I'm a dog. So I put on the mask and I just look like a dog, but I'm green. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's it's interesting uh, then that the dog also didn't have like thoughts of like, Where's my bone or food? Fantastic and like, fun. Uh, right. Yeah. Fantastic fun. That's all he thinks about. And so he just remains the same dog. Um, <laughs> Milo's a good but, but no, to, to go back to the, the, uh, the effect, the, like the mask effect, that was also something that stuck, that, that stuck with me about the mask, uh, from having probably seen it when I was younger. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is is that that effect like the one thing that did scare me about the mask when I was younger is the fact that he had a hard time taking it off like he yeah. he, would str- he would struggle to get it off and it it is almost like this mask is possessing him and as we l- learn later on in the movie this is a mask that loki the trickster god used to have and so that's why like it it has this effect and who knows what um but that that was all all, like yeah it it looks like you're both being sucked in and magnetized but also like your skin is like pulled out to like fit into the mask as it gets closer it's just it's a it's a really gross effect and just a, a an awful thought um but it's it's just so like it's not something they focus on it's not something that they they really show off all that much it's just that split second as they're p- putting it on uh and then also shout out to the scene where he's trying to put the mask on in ben stein's o- office uh, and he's nothing ha- yeah. ha- 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 happens, and so he's just sitting there like, <laughs> "It's good, good use of, yeah, good use of a Ben Stein in here, yeah, all day or two days of filming with Ben Stein." Her dry, clear eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. This I, was fun. I want to, I want to briefly mention a bit of artistry in that. Sure. Yes, please. Scene at the end when we go to the cop, uh, not the Copacabana, the the Coco Bongo Club, 
and they're having the the casino night benefit to put the cash in the big bag for the war orphans. When the camera is panning around the floor showing you like the party scene and the the big pig and the gamblers and Stanley's mm-hmm. friend flirting with cigarette girl and all that. It's this beautiful series of long shots. There is a cut in the middle. But I stopped yeah. and I rewound it. Like, that camera kept going. The amount of takes that must have taken, how synchronized it is. It's a, a really subtle but lovely one shot back there yeah. in that scene. There you go. Yeah, I just that 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 whole club scene in g- g- general is I, it, it, it feels it's not the climax but it feels like the spotlight, like this feels like the moment of the film mm. here where the yeah. mask gets to shine and it's fancy and there's action and there's dancing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He has, uh, he has other dead, dead, dead dance numbers and stuff, but none like this. Mm. So. I have a question. Yes. Who would you cast as a lady mask? A lady mask. Um, in in nineteen ninety four or modern day time? Because I I don't know if any, I do any time when you have an answer. Okay. Um. Ooh, who would be? If all right, so if if I don't know exactly what happened to her with all the drugs and stuff, but if Amanda Bynes hadn't oh. uh, gone all down that road, I think she would have been a, a good one to potentially do a yes mask. I see yeah. that. I'd love I'd love to see her red hair against a mask green face. Sure, that's, yeah, it's visually great. Yeah, that's a nice answer. My answer is Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I'd love to see anybody try it. I, there was one of the letterbox comments I saw that was like, why do we have two men masks and dog masks, but we never got lady masks? Cameron Diaz never put on the mask. Right. Yeah. There was a sequel called Son of Mask. That's what I was where just a baby about put to on, mention. A baby put on yeah. the mask and the mask was now played by Jamie Kennedy. I've never seen it, but I saw a it also has a song and dance number, at least one. And Uh I saw that out of context once and it felt (sighs) truly unnerving, (laughs) truly disturbing to watch whatever that number was. Yeah. Oh, man. According to Wikipedia here. Uh, Nintendo Power offered yes. Raiders a chance via sweepstakes to win a cameo role in the film. I wonder if that actually happened. No, 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 no. no? I was oh, also it, reading it this on, on IMDb say? because this was when they were originally oh, yeah. trying to get Jim Carrey to do a sequel to this and he declined and years later they did the Jamie Kennedy version. But I read that in Nintendo Power they had to <laughs> write a retraction write an apology to that sweepstakes winner like we can't get you in the mask too yeah uh it says carrie eventually bailed on the project forcing amongst uh uh, other things nintendo power to give the winner of the contest the equivalent (laughs) cash value instead what's the equivalent cash value of a walk-on cameo in the mask i don't i don't know right uh, and then yes, yeah, son of Did mask it come in was a big in... dollar sign bag, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, son of the mask, I guess was then in two thousand five, so almost a decade later, which is kind of wild. Uh, and apparently that is considered one of the worst films ever made. So sure, there you go. That makes sense. It also had that cartoon, and I think the cartoon had Taco Bell toys. It did. I do vaguely r- remember that. Uh, never watched the cartoon, though, and I'm sure of that. I, but I remember it being around. Yeah. But I can't picture like any actual episodes or picture a character besides the mask and Milo. I don't know who else is in it. <laughs> yeah. What does he get up to? It it felt of the same ilk of like the Beetlejuice cartoon. Yes. Yes. 
anyways um that's the mask i i don't know that's, if i have, I have much one, else to say you have, you have one something else final in? thing to say one final letterboxd review i say hit the best me with one it for last this is just from luke and it says two and a half stars I watched this entire movie at a doctor's office today because when I got there, for some reason, the guy at the desk put it on for me. He said, let's put on something good for you and chose the mask. Doctor was an hour and a half late. LOL. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. Sure. It's like, hey. Let's put on something special for you. Play. It's the mask. <laughs> the mask. Is this supposed to knock me out? Am I supposed to no longer feel pain after this? <laughs> <laughs> what medical effect does the mask have on me? Right. Yeah. If you think this is a good decision, I need I, a new doctor, my friend. Uh, <laughs> watch the mask, then please give us the sperm sample. We're sure you're going to be ready. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff good stuff um okay well let's see here let's take a look at bingo let me see if i can now this when you mentioned earlier screen. that i pitched you red movie and green movie my goal was that each of these movies would cross off something in our bingo sheets besides just also being abstractly christmas themed Yeah, I picked the mask because it would finally give us big puddle splash when a character is already down on their luck and then a car drives by and splashes a big puddle on them. Indeed. Um, So, yeah, I I can finally mark that one off of my list. I don't did 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 you already have that one on here? Did you did you I just marked it off minutes okay. before you got here. Uh gotcha. so now okay. I am down to uh unless you can fit arted to death into next week, which that was going to be the other pick. Uh, if you picked I... red, we would have watched The Red Shoes, which okay. is an arted to death movie. Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. Um so yeah, I I I I think this is probably where our stuff is gonna end yeah. up to be for I this this next week. I don't know if we will get only, any of these things. Only, only you know what you're pitching for next week. Oh uh, no, you told me. Uh, I also yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't seen it, so I don't know what specifically is in it. It's it's been a while since I've seen what we're watching, but uh, I so I don't remember exactly. But anyways, this is basically where Bingo is ending up. Melissa crushed me, um, though. The big puddle splash did get me one more bingo. Uh, so I guess next time we can officially tally He's up. I think you already have your number, but I I don't have mine written yeah. down off the top of my head. So I think I have thirteen bingos. Oh man, okay. In there our uh seven by seven grid. There you go. There you go. Okay. Well, now that we have done our bingo check in, Melissa, let's talk recommendations for people who enjoyed this. What else might they like? Ah. Uh, I've mentioned some similar feeling things earlier. Have you ever seen that Dick Tracy movie? I have not. But I'm I, I've I know of it. That, it's that's not artistically fascinating and how much it really tries to be a living version of the old Dick Tracy comic strips. Like the movie was designed in only seven colors. The seven colors the comic oh, strips would have been printed in. So yeah. everything is like bright, bold, primary. All the goons that Dick Tracy is fighting. Dick Tracy is still wearing the bright yellow trench coat, just as uh-huh. he did in the comics. His girlfriend is still named Tess Trueheart. They didn't try and make any of this stuff natural or normal. And all of the goons have these 
grotesque faces and, and names. Like there's a guy named Flat Top whose head is entirely flat. Yeah. You know, like it's all stuff like that. They look like garbage pail kids or something. I I recommend Dick Tracy, but also I say it is the one movie. I've never watched a movie in my life that is an ostensibly a normal world. I mean, it's not like a dystopia. It's not a war movie or something. This is the most quote unquote normal movie I've ever seen that I would never want to live in. Like, I'm sure I would have a fine life. I'd live in a city. I'd be comfortable. Dick Tracy's taking care of all the crime, well, you know? Good thing your name's just, not Flat Top. I, <laughs> you wouldn't have a flat head. <laughs> there's something so unnerving about this world to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, truly, I can see it's I, so stylized I, that it's, it's almost uncomfortable because it's stylized yes. but then brought to life. I, it's... Maybe it's the fact that it's set in the 40s and I don't feel comfortable imagining myself in any time before TV. Like, sincerely, gotcha. you are yeah. not catching. Huh. If I have a time machine, I'm not going anywhere past like 1955 when I can go home and watch, turn on my little 12 inch box and watch the Jack Parr show or whatever. But I, I recommend Dick Tracy. I wish I liked it more. It is a feat. There is tr- there's really nothing like dick tracy yeah uh i it's a disney movie you can probably find it on disney plus probably dick tracy. yeah uh have you ever seen monkey bone no not familiar with that one at all at all uh-uh monkey bone is a motion picture from like 2001 2002 uh, it is directed by stop motion animator Henry Selick. It is a mixed live action and animation movie where Brendan Fraser plays a comic artist and his main character is Monkey Bone. And he's mm-hmm. getting concerned that he's started to like sell Monkey Bone off to like too much merchandise and things like this. He's like, oh, have I sold out? Have I lost control of my character? And then he gets into an accident and falls into a coma and he goes into this dream world where monkey bone is real. And there's all of these bizarre creatures and characters around him. And then he has to like escape from this coma world because while he's in the coma, his sister, his like conniving sister is going to sell away all of the rights to all of his properties so that she can cash in on the merchandise money. It's never heard of that. I don't know if it's good, but again, it's fascinating. And like the animation and the visual design of it is very skilled. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, Tagline for the movie. Get boned. Monkey bone. Love getting boned, right? Yep. You just I kind of want to buy this poster on eBay. It's very funny. (laughs) Brendan Fraser, Chris Kattan, a little claymation ape. Get boned. Uh, That's funny. Just t- talking about other larger than life 90s characters. Got to shout out my boy Austin Powers. I'm going mm-hmm. to a screening of Austin Powers at the Alamo Draft House on Friday. I'm very excited to see him in a theater. I've never gotten to. I only know him on home video. Nice. And uh, while we're talking about hey, masks, hey, I also. <laughs> yeah. I, I will to, behave. Put, I will be quiet there. and respectful yeah. in a movie theater. Yeah. Thank you. S- silence your cell phone. Like <laughs> <laughs> the two part episode of Goosebumps, based on the book by R.L. Stein, The Haunted Mask, about a very shy girl who is easily scared by other kids at school. And she goes into some creepy new Halloween store and she wants the scariest mask they have. She's like, I'm tired of getting picked on. Give me the scariest mask and then I'm going to scare those bullies. And then she puts on this weird green mask and it gets stuck to her face and she can't take it off. And she's becoming a different person. There you go. It's interesting. The, the str- Perhaps the strongest of goosebumps. It's a really lovely two part episode next Halloween or anytime. Please watch the haunted mask. Cool. Good stuff. Um, well, like we kind of mentioned earlier on in the episode, yeah, you, you, some 
some Sam Raimi Spider Me and stuff would be good recommendations that you guys can go check out. Um, I'm even trying to think of like what comic books I would recommend if if you want more of that like uh, cartoony superhero city uh, wild a- a- antics. I would say go check out The Tick. Uh, we, oh I think, yes, I think we covered The Tick on the podcast. Season I mean, look one on of what the, the Amazon Prime version of The Tick with Peter Serafinowicz and Griffin Newman. We did. We covered that way back on episode 97. Um, so, yeah, that was season one of The Tick from Amazon Prime. Um, I would uh, even think uh, Elephant Men would be a great one. It's like a crime noir slash war story, but it is it mm. feels very much in that like same gritty 90s comics era even though it's not from that era exactly um yeah just uh in some some interesting art in in that stuff uh even yeah if you want to get more into like pulp heroes like the phantom which you also mentioned the movie of that one or doc savage uh i I guess that's more like a bit entering but like the the phantom Phantom, and stuff would be in there the shadow Um, yeah uh green hornet he's green yep that's a great one um yeah, I I would recommend some of the that 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 stuff. Um I have seen the the first of the newer Green Hornet movies that I had what's his name uh did didn't think it was Seth Rogen. Great. The first of them. Didn't he only make one? I I I thought he made two. I like the think so. I I could be completely wrong. I don't need to look I would that lo- up. Who cares? I, um, <laughs> I no. I would love if you proved it to me that Seth Rogen made another Green Hornet. Okay, let me, let me see if I can look this up here. Uh, Seth Rogen. Because if he didn't, I really want to know what you're Hornet. thinking it was. I don't know. Uh, let's see. All right, where is this Green Hornet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wikipedia. Here we go. Um. Um, location release do to do to do reception oh here we go canceled sequel uh 2020 that no sequel would be forthcoming since the movie did almost 250 million and was actually very well liked but we made the movie for too much money uh one we made it in la for certain reasons and two we decided to go 3d that added another uh, 10 million uh yes. if i had if i had done it in a uh tax rebate state and not in 3d uh it would have been considered a huge financial success yes 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 uh but it wasn't so we're not yeah now. you get a sequel is often green lit based on how successful it is not in dollars earned but in dollars earned versus dollars it took to make it so that yeah that is an interesting look behind the scenes and he's like i filmed it in the wrong place <laughs> and like, i had to make the thing 3d and kato had to punch you in your face and that's why <laughs> we never got a second one yeah uh i, I cameron is apparently all also in that one I don't remember that movie well enough to confirm that, but according to Wikipedia, she's also in that one. Um, so yeah, if you want more Cameron D- Diaz in a comic book related movie, you can also you watch go. the Shrek movies if you want to watch hear her being green kissing a green man. <laughs> if you were upset that she didn't put on the uh, mask in this one, and that she could have uh, been. G- green yeah also Shrek. other great green jim carrey performances there is ron howard's dr seuss's how the grinch stole christmas yep. and batman forever where he's not painted green but it, he has a green aura playing yeah. the riddler yeah that that green suit for sure 
Um, yeah. I think those are some good, good recommendations and stuff for y'all to go check out. Uh, but for next week, uh, since I had some health issues, we are recording this at a much later date than we normally do. So I wanted to make sure Melissa uh, had enough time to plan accordingly and watch whatever we needed to watch for next episode. Uh, that being said, I wanted to go with something lighter and breezier. Uh, it's our final episode of the yeah, 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 next week. So I was like, let's do some Christmas specials. That's what I wanted to pitch. So I found three that were, uh, that I thought were interesting. Um, the first one was one that I didn't really know anything about. This was Who Killed Santa? A Murderville Murder Mystery. Um, this is that Will Arnett, uh, improv show, uh, that I, I don't know if they're still doing that show or not, or if that was like a COVID thing or who knows what. Um, but yeah, it was, it's an improv show. They did a Christmas special on that. Um, Melissa did not pick that one. Um, my second pitch was the Powerpuff G Girls. Twas the fight before Christmas. Uh, which this you guys could, could also have uh, found on Netflix. Uh, but yeah, the g girls are trying to get their Christmas lists to Santa. But Princess, one of their arch nemeses, decides that she's going to be the only one that gets to give her list to Santa. Uh, and yeah, Melissa did not pick that one. Uh, but yeah, I also was, was like, I vaguely remember that. Why not? Let's watch some power puff girls. But Melissa said no. Instead, Melissa went with pitch number three, which was Bob's Burgers season eight, episodes six through seven, entitled The Bleakening. Uh, you guys can find this on Hulu. And in these two episodes, Linda decides to throw a Christmas party at the restaurant. Uh, but during which some of her favorite or ornaments get stolen. The kids suspect anti-Santa is the culprit. Ugh. Um. So, yeah, I, I watch Bob's Burgers with my partner all the time. Um, but it's been a while since I've seen these ones, so I don't remember exactly what happens. Uh, and there's Melissa, a lot of Bob's Burgers. There's oh, there like is, 15 yeah. seasons or something. So I get that you don't remember something from season six. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what made you decide to pick this one here? These Bob's Burgers I, episodes. I was just thinking that I really know very little about Bob's Burgers for how prolific it has become. I think I've seen like a dozen non-consecutive episodes of Bob's Burgers across its run. I like the show. Sure. Yeah. I, I've just never like really sat down with it before. And I know you've had, you know, there's a great long experience. You two yeah. watching it. So I thought, what you do you have a lot you can teach me and how fun for the two. You've got that cookbook. You guys can make. Yeah, a I have a Bob's Burgers cookbook. <laughs> it's fun. Um. Yeah, so that is what we will do uh, this next week for the final episode of the review show for 2023. Once again, that is Bob's Burgers Season 8, Episodes 6 through 7, entitled The Bleakening. And you guys can find those on Hulu. Uh, so yeah, just a total of 40 minutes. Uh, some Christmas holiday cartoons should be fun, should be light and breezy. Mm -hmm. it'll be good um cool well yeah that being said i think this basically wraps up our podcast for the week uh once again be on the lookout for our end of the year uh grand prix uh our formerly known as our retrospective uh but our our, our whatnots grand prix uh which we will have on we'll be recording on december 17th uh, so it should be uh, fully out uh, to ev to everyone shortly after that. Um, but yeah, should be good. Should be fun. We hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. Uh, if you are celeb 
celebrating or not or celebrating multiple things uh there's we hope lots you are. to do yeah there's tons uh we, we hope you're safe we hope you stay warm uh and we hope you spend some time with some good friends and family too so we hope you stay cold if you're in the southern hemisphere don't yeah, forget stay, about stay cool, like australia you know? and their hot christmas <laughs> right yeah yeah um so yeah good stuff with that uh and that being said we will see you all next week oh wait i guess we should do all of our our, our, yeah. our uh, that stuff <laughs> melissa where can the people I find can. you on the interwebs I have a letterbox at Wilkiewit, W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. I I read more on letterbox than I ever post on it. So there's there's not much, but I do hope to do more. I was just about to ask, are you the newest review of The Mask on there? No, I I I have to really come up with something succinct and elegant to express. I'm not just talking to one friend. This is what's like tripping me up with letterbox. This is that if I talked about the mask or any movie I'm watching with any individual friend, I know what I'd tell that person specific to their, their tastes. Yeah. But I don't know what to just tell the world about it. <laughs> that takes a lot more thought. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, well, yeah, you guys can find me at yo Kyle Springer on social media places. Uh, if you would like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on most social medias as well. Uh, so please go like, share, and subscribe. You guys know the deal with all of that. If you're watching this on YouTube, please go check out one of our other videos right over there. That would help us out a ton as well. This has been number 282 of The Whatnots Review Show. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.